Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to the launch of our new range of kit guitars. This is something that we've been working on and trying to get to for a number of years. And finally, finally, we are there. We have, to start with, ooh, look at that. That's the neck joint. <laughs> um, we have an S-type and a T-type to start with. We will, coming up to Easter, 2018 also have a carved top single cutaway LP type. Can you hear my lawyers in the back of my brain saying, don't get sued? Because um, that would suck. But uh, that is, uh, yeah, well, that's, that's the next stage. We are keeping this range simple, as simple as possible. Uh, we will be doing limited edition runs with special bodies, uh, special timbers, and the same thing with the necks. You'll be able to buy these necks, and they are, these are compatible with all well-made, accurately made uh, bodies as well. So, uh, well, there we go. It, it really is something that we've been excited about for a long time and wanted to do, and uh, it's taken it's taken some time. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry. Uh, I'm easily distracted. I am going to, I'm going to build this telly now and uh, put it together. So uh, without any more talking, there's going to be lots of talking. It, it's, it, it's, this is a crimson video. It is what it is. Uh, so Check out crimsonguitars.com. These two are available right now, and, uh, and you want one. These are made on the same machines by the same people that create our uh, own range of production guitars. So there we go. I'm gonna put this down somewhere safe. <laughs> okay. This is about taking a fairly standard instrument and making it into something slightly less standard. Uh, we've got a set of good quality hardware, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, bits and pieces from all parts. <coughs> Ash body, uh, rock maple neck, ebony fretboard, truss rod, and uh, carbon fiber stiffening rods and basically the same sort of stuff that we use on our guitars because quality is the most important thing of all. Uh, but with this build, I'm gonna play around a little bit with the finish. I'm going to burn the body because I like that finish a lot. And I'm gonna take the oxyacetylene torch to that and just uh, destroy that a little bit. And, uh, and I'm also gonna be making the scratch plate and the control plate out of copper maybe even a laminate of copper. Ooh, Damascus copper. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, create a patina with some ammonia and mustard and salt and bits and pieces like that. And uh, that against the burnt body will be quite nice. I'm gonna stain the neck, do the fret work, put the harbor on and we will have a guitar. Uh, the pickups, these kit guitars are not being sold as a complete kit with everything that you want because th that is the lower end of the market. That's There are far too many awesome variations available and uh, with, with both pickups and hardware and different types of bridges and tuners, etc. And for this one, I'm using a set of custom, uh, crums custom crimson, not these. These are not supposed to be in this box. I'm supposed to have my Teddy pickups. So the Teddy pickup box is over there. But I'll unveil that later. Yeah, set of custom Teddy pickups. Oh, look at that. Hey, custom box of Teddy pickupness. So, uh, yeah. And this is all coming now. So I am going to stop talking and I'm just going to start building and uh, enter voiceover mode. Well, voiceover guy it is. So, here we go. I have got 
the bulk of the work done. I've just made this fantastic instrument out of nothing. <laughs> or not. Or not. What I have is a tiny Allen key. A tiny Allen key. There we go. Uh, beautiful kit instrument. And uh, from here it's fairly straightforward. There's putting it together, putting a finish on, obviously fret work. And uh, it's probably a couple of days work. Mm. Do you doubt me? So, look at that fantastic partially finished tattoo on his head. My goodness. <laughs> okay. Let the fumbling begin. Uh, these pickups are never really straightforward. Now, uh, you would have noticed that this body does not have the bridge holes drilled. And we're going to go into them in a minute. But uh, the, the reasoning is that there are various different types of telebridge, uh, some of them with slightly different positioning. So which, that's basically in the hole there. Which is not ideal. And we decided to leave it up to you. You're good enough, aren't you? Of course you are. I can't actually see the joint, which uh, <laughs> means it's very well made. However, it is problematic. So, look in the cavity, look at the end. The center line is basically one of the most important parts of a build. I've started using mechanical pencils with a half millimeter lead. It's uh, much more accurate than a slightly sharpened normal pencil. Ooh, nice bit of videography there. <laughs> It's not like that was planned at all. Okay, Incra make these. Uh, this is a general tool, I think. But uh, yeah, if you get anything by Incra, it will be absolutely phenomenal. So, I've very carefully marked out where everything needs to be. And uh, I'll always use a uh, a brattle of some sort. I think that was actually a scratch roll. But uh, anyway, to uh, help guide the drill bits in originally. Nice tight neck joint. It's one of the most important things with uh, with a kit. Now I'm not going to drill all the way through. Uh, not by a long shot. Slowly does it. Always let the drill bit uh, clear the shavings. The last thing you need is for that to bind in the body and uh, you know, pull it up or <laughs> worse, snap off. It's played safe. So I've just realized that voiceover me just completely lied. On these two outer holes, I am drilling all the way through. And they will then be the guides for everything else that we do. And you'll see that in a second. So uh, I've set up the drill press, my fantastic uh, record power beast of awesomeness. And uh, I've got the whole in the table directly underneath the drill bit so that I'm not going to damage the drill. And then every other hole that I have to do from the front here, I'm only going halfway through. And here we 
go. Just double check everything. Use the bridge. I now have a pickup in there, which made that slightly different. And using the two holes that went all the way through, I've now marked out the positioning on the back of all of the other holes. I'll do the internal ones first, double check the depth, make sure I've got enough room for my ferrules, and then very carefully eyeball it and use my markings and everything else to try <laughs> and try perfectly drill ferrules. This is not the easiest of tasks. And uh, once we're done, using the slightly larger holes, I do the outer two, and there we go. Perfection. He sounds so surprised. I really hate drilling string ferrules. I hate it. Uh, there's a reason why we haven't done it on the CNC machines for this. And, uh, and that is because everybody needs to learn how to drill string ferrules. Uh, no, the, there are enough different bridges out there with different spacings, um, but also a lot of tele bridges uh, have the option and people prefer top mount where they don't need string ferrules at all. So we've left it off at the moment. We'll see. Always put your drill bits back where they came from. Okay, so we have a functioning a bridge with holes in the right place. And uh, it's time to sand. Yay. There's a lot of sanding in a guitar. These kits uh, are roughly sanded to I think about 150, 180 grit. And uh, because we can't take all of the fun away from you, can we now? <laughs> Actually, when this much work is done. There's a hole in the bottom of that cavity, isn't there? <laughs> there is as well. <laughs> Full. As I was saying. Depth. Depth, we're fine. When this much sanding has been done for you, it's a very it basic actually does thing. become rather enjoyable. That's when, where my neck's gonna be. I can't see that line. No. I was gonna be doing some sanding about now, but I'd forgotten about these lovely things. I don't like neck plates if I can avoid them. So, yeah, these will be recessed and look lovely. What a pretty shot. Well done, Sean. So I'm eyeballing the width, but measuring the measuring the length. Okay. This is a Fermag Forstner bit. This has actually got the removable uh, tip, I suppose is the word. And uh, it's slightly larger than the ferrules. And this doesn't really matter because uh, I'm assuming you've seen the, uh, the other video, uh, the advert that we did for these. Uh, it doesn't really matter because this instrument is going to be burned. I do need to make sure that the depth is correct. So I set the depth stop on the pillar drill so that all four would be exactly the same. I seem to spend an inordinate amount of time blowing dust off things, including computer screens. A pillar drill is not essential, but by gum it makes it easier. 
and uh, if at all possible get yourself a very good quality stable beast. I'm a huge fan of record. Uh, we've been using we've been using record pillar drills down in the, on the factory floor for ages and uh, we just can't seem to break it which doesn't hold true for a lot of the machines that we have. Uh, so that's good, that's four and a half mil. These are for mag drill bits, they're very, very good. They don't tear out very much, but they do have a very tight spiral. So when I go through the other side, it's gonna to wanna to try and pull through a little bit, I think. As well as pulling, pulling through, if you're not very careful, the drill bit can actually, if you push harder, uh, shatter out, and that's the last thing we want. Little hand count sink to tidy it up. I could have put masking tape on there to make it a little tidier, but it, it's an internal thing, so not too much of an issue. Safe storage. Hey, we sell them. Not them. The storage things. What are you doing? We do sell them. Ah, goodness. As a business owner, I'm almost thinking that uh, the guys who made this sanded it too much and took away too much of the work. In other words, we're doing it too well. Uh, as somebody who has to make one of these kits, I'm very grateful to them. Actually quite therapeutic, seriously. Sanding down one or two guitars every now and then, it's nice. You see the result. It helps starting with a guitar that's mostly done already, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it can be quite enjoyable. So for the finish that I want, this is sufficient. I'm going to be burning this guitar and uh, basically undoing any fine sanding I've done. I just wanted to make sure that all of the curves were perfect. There weren't any major dents or anything like that. Uh, preparation is key with any finish, even if it is a finish that involves fire. And uh, yeah, start with perfection. You end up, hopefully, with perfection. That really does look like a one-piece body. Look at that end grain. Maybe there wasn't a center join. No, there is a center join. That's really well made. All right, hook goes in my pocket. And uh, let's get some smoky air, shall we? Fire exit. <laughs>
that was pretty, wasn't it? This is the next stage. I normally don't do it while the guitar is still warm, but uh, yeah, there we go. Wire brush, go with the grain really, really fast. Superman, my gosh. Uh, and get rid of the, as much of that as you can. Wow, this is fascinating. Already you can start to see the final finish. The grain is emptied. The soft material is removed. We have an interesting looking instrument. An interesting mint. If you will. Guitar finishing oil would reveal all. I do love this part. Once the oil is on, and it starts curing pretty much immediately, and actually if the instrument is still warm, it also sucks it in a lot more. Uh, you pretty much immediately, i.e. within five or 10 minutes, have to start removing the excess. Uh, it gets stuck in the grain, and uh, if it's softer, more porous wood, it sometimes comes out of pores or uh, burl areas. But uh, if you leave it on to dry, it never really fully dries and it becomes tacky to the touch and it is not the right sort of finish. Uh, you basically remove the excess straight away, get a, a good looking finish like that, let it dry and cure and then come back for a second or a third coat. There we go. Mind your head. Nice moment. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please click like, please subscribe, and don't forget to come back for the next video coming soon. Also, you, if you're watching this before the end of 2017, can win this guitar. It can be yours. See the description below for details of how to win, or at least enter the competition. Goodbye.